All right, I'm going to do a video here uh, answering a question uh, why I don't recommend Robert Breaker. Um, first time I heard about Robert Breaker was way back in uh, around September of 2015 when he came out and his video got real popular. This thing about predicting September 23rd, 2017 as a possibility for being the rapture. And uh, some people sent me, you know, the link to it. And I thought, well, you know, one day I had some time and I thought I'll just watch it and see what he has to say. As soon as this stuff came up, I was like, oh, you know, I wonder if he went to PVI because I recognized he's using a lot of Ruckman's material. You know, the way Ruckman draws things out and stuff like that. And I thought he must be from PVI and, you know, and uh, didn't really know much about him or anything. Never heard of him much, in, you know, before that. And checked into it. Yeah, he went to PVI. And, and uh, I was saying in my some of the comments I was wrong. I thought that Ruckman kicked him out of the uh, Pensacola Bible Institute. No, he actually was going to their Bible Baptist Church there in Pensacola. I'll show you that proof here in just a minute. So I apologize for that. I was wrong in my comment section here on the video where I called out Robert Breaker being easy believes him. But um, anyhow, so you know, I, I just kind of thought, well, you know, whatever. Um, didn't really know a whole lot about him, but uh, I'm just going to play some things. And I, and what's happened is so many times I get this thing. And people, oh, you have no grace, you have no grace, you know, I get that, you know, and from people that have followed the ministry for years, and I'm going like, okay, you've learned so much from me, and yet you still don't trust me. That's the part that's so hard for me to understand. How is it that people can learn from me for years and years and years, and yet not trust me when I make a judgment call on somebody? I don't understand that. You know, it just, it's, it's odd. And I understand, you know, that they did the same thing to Paul. They did the same thing to Jesus Christ. I understand that. But um, I think you know what I'm saying. So I get, you know, I've been getting emailed. People send me stuff about Robert Breaker. And, you know, he's very wishy-washy on the thing of uh, repentance and, you know, and what it means in terms of salvation and things. And, you know, he's saying the same kind of thing that uh, Ed Fenninger says about that prayer is a work and you don't need to pray to get saved and stuff like this. Uh, you know, and, and I just like let it go and let it go and let it go and just kind of like, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, I have, you know, literally not come out, made public statements about the guy in, you know, almost two years, over well over a year, heading towards two years of knowing about problems and just saying, well, you know, hopefully he'll get straightened out and that stuff and whatever else. You talk about grace, okay? I'm not looking to pick fights with people and set myself up as the sole authority in the body of Christ and things like this. I'm not. But more and more brethren are starting to say, okay, yeah, he's some big problems there. A younger brother out there, Joshua Alvarez, odd interviews, um, does some real good work. Uh, young man knows the Bible very well. He came out with a video talking about this heresy of breaker saying that calling actually means believing in Romans 10, you know, 9 through 13 in that area there. Um, Brother John Davis over in the UK, um, in his latest newsletter, he talked about breaker saying, you know, you know exposing him for the same thing. And uh, for those of you who don't understand and you say, well, you're just, maybe you're just twisting his words. I'm going to play um, this part here of his sermon you're, you're seeing here. I'm going to play it. And you can hear what he has to say for yourself. What? Well, listen to just a couple minutes of this. Watch the whole thing. If you don't believe me, write to him and ask him. He believes prayer is a work, and then it won't save you. Let's listen to a little bit of this. So where does this calling come from? From the heart. So to just go around and tell people, repeat this prayer after me, or confess this, repeat these words and confess this. If all you do is get someone to say something with the mouth. You have won no one to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have literally damned them to hell, made them seven times more a child of hell than before because you've given them a false hope into making them think that the mouth, something they said with the mouth, saves them. I don't know what it is with this oral fixation that people have today with the mouth, but it's not the mouth that saves us. It's believing from the heart. It's calling from the heart. And how do you call upon God from the heart? By trusting the gospel of Jesus Christ. So back to Romans chapter 10. Okay, so uh, let me get this straight. Um, believing 
is believing in Romans 10, but then calling is also believing, apparently. You know, I guess maybe one's believing from the head, one's believing from the heart. You know, I mean, it just read the text, brethren. And he gets into all this stuff, you know, that, that if you call upon the name of the Lord, then you're not, you're not trusting in the blood. It's a bloodless gospel. And the blood atonement is so important. Nobody's saying that. Okay, where's this stuff come from? You understand how that Jesus died on the cross. When you hear the gospel, the gospel is clearly presented. You understand he died on the cross. His blood was shed for me. His blood pays for my sins. God, please save me. I trust in, in what Jesus Christ did on the cross to pay for my sins. You're just calling to the Lord. You're not coming around trying to, you know, steal salvation. I mean, it's simple. But, you know, I take real big issue with this right here. He crosses out the name or the word call and says it just means belief. Uh, that's changing scripture. That is literally saying the word call. You have to look it up in the dictionary. It doesn't actually mean call and confessing with your mouth. No, no. It means belief. Calling from the heart, which is belief. <laughs> Stupid, ridiculous nonsense. You know, see, the heretics will get you on these on the, the issue of salvation. They'll come in. And they'll try to take some little thing, little part of salvation, they just amplify that. It has to be all that. And it can't be anything else. You know, it's ridiculous. But, you know, talked about this plenty of times, so I'm not going to go off on a big thing. Here's another video that him and his wife did. And they're, they're mocking. I'm not even going to play it. It's, it's just disgusted me. I didn't even watch the whole thing. It was so sickening. They're mocking people calling upon the name of the Lord. You can see she's there. And they're making fun. You know, and he's just saying, just take it. Just take it. Take it. You know, and they're making fun. Oh, please, can I have it? Can, please, can I have it? It's disgusting. Here he is his thing from his website. Um, reasons why we left our old home church. They didn't just, oh, we just left it. They got kicked out. You'll see that here in a minute from uh, Peter Ruckman. Um, he says here, prior to that day, I never heard the gospel presented plainly and was only taught Romans 10, 13 as the plan salvation thinking calling meant simply only repeating a prayer over and over who says that who says you have to continually repeat the prayer over and over and over all the time to be saved look what he says here with chick tracks i uttered the prayer every night from age 13 to age 18 hoping each prayer would somehow mystically secure god's pardon of my sins and give me eternal life it did not um i have never met any christian you know, truly born again Christian that said that they are continuing to pray the prayer of salvation every day. What? You know, see, it's, he's taking, he's setting up straw man arguments. He's saying, well, you know, repetitious prayers uh, don't save you. Well, I agree with that. But calling upon the name of the Lord is not a repetitious prayer. You do it one time. All right. I mean, the only reason you'd have a reason to do it more than once would be as if the first time you were like very insincere, like you were a little child, you know, childhood conversions. Uh, that's what happened to me. I prayed the prayer when I was a little boy and stuff, and I didn't, I had no idea what I was praying. It was just Sunday school, you know, you, you want to get saved, pray this prayer. And I thought, okay, I guess I did that, you know. It wasn't really explained to me. And of course, I got older and I realized, oh man, I'm a really bad sinner here. And uh, I got conviction of my sin, and I said, okay. Um, I need to get saved, and I call upon the name of the Lord, understanding what he did on the cross, understanding that his blood was shed for me. I didn't, I, I mean, who ever heard of this? I never even heard of this. Um, he says here, for I was trusting in my prayer instead of trusting God's promise of salvation by simply trusting in his finished work alone. I was confused into thinking my prayer saved me instead of trusting alone in Christ's payment for me. Again, he's twisting things. You know, I learned a long time ago that when people twist the scriptures to this point, it's not the Holy Spirit, number one, and it's not their flesh, number two. There's another spirit involved. You know, I mean, it's incredible. Here's a thing I'm going to give the, um, this is forthesavior.com. Um, I'm going to give the link to this in the description box down below. You can read the whole thing. It's going back and forth over the Spanish Bible issue, and Breaker thinks that he's some kind of an expert on it and whatever else. But this is the full letter to Robert Breaker by his former pastor, Dr. Peter Ruckman. Uh, Ruckman writes here, he says, Mr. Breaker, I have neither the time nor the interest to help you into the big time after you feel, failed as a missionary and evangelist. We didn't dump you as a missionary because of any problem over any translation in any language. We dropped you because, number one, you lied about being a pastor at Gar Garçon Point 
You only supplied a couple of times when the pastor was absent. You didn't win a soul to Christ the entire time you pastored either in Honduras. I think he means pastored there. It's misspelled instead of pastured. Number two, you did not really pastor anyone in Honduras. You did exactly what you are doing now, traveling back and forth to the States. Then you were doing it to visit your girlfriend. You are now doing it to establish yourself as an authority on foreign translations as a savior to Hispanics. You have always preached a lousy Milton gospel established in your hometown, Milton, Florida. All right. There's so many sects and things down there. People that have left Ruckman's, you know, system down there, and then they go off and they start their own church and whatever else. And you know, I, I've I've met a lot of the PBI grads and stuff, and had a lot of dealings with them over the years. And you know, I know about a lot of what goes on. Um, the five hundred dollars I gave to Park before you knew him or met him was after a conversation with him and a Mexican named Riaz. Uh, they told me they were interested in translating the AV into Spanish. Neither one did. Riaz turned out to be a pastor who had some people in his church who wanted to revise another revision of Valera. When Park sent you the letter that you mailed to me, he said our positions and us. He never mentioned his buddy, you, the entire time I talked with him. You contacted him after I gave him the money. Typical breaker move. If I had known you were involved in the translation, I would not have given him a dime. No, sonny boy, I have never posed as an authority on any foreign translations. The interpreter uses Luther when I preach in Germany. The interpreter uses Valera when I preach in, Mex in Mexico. The interpreter uses the version by Song Lee when I preach in Korea. I don't tell any foreign interpreter what book he uses. He is translating from a King James sermon from start to finish. Your position is so apparent that it is disgusting. There is nothing in any... In anything you write that mentions lost Hispanics or soul winning, your motive of, of getting embroiled in an intellectual discussion over virgins is rotten. You are simply making a name for yourself by writing, writing on the spirituality of others. Um, in this case, Riaz, Park, Gomez, McArdle, and others. You yourself have never produced anything. Now you are trying to get publicity by attacking books so you can sell your own books, and that is according to your books which you sent me. In other words, he did produce his own books, but he's taking it from other people's writings and things. Our mission board and board of trustees know exactly what your ministry is. That's why they dumped you. They dumped you. Breaker comes out and he says in his letter, you know, the reasons why we left our former church. No, they got dumped. They got kicked out. Um, all of your publicity mad little nobodies trying to hot dog it all the, hot dog it all the time only wanted to be recognized as spiritual leaders to do this you are forced to associate yourself sooner or later with uh, pastor's name there you all have to hang on my shirt tail to get a hearing in the body of Christ there's you know a lot of people have understood that they're just he's just you know the little uh, whiteboard drawings breaker does it's just stuff that's Ruckman's come out with years and years ago and you know I'll talk more about that here in just a minute but evidently Pastor's name must be in the spotlight since all of you are struggling to get into it. You're getting connected with the wrong crew. Weldon Jones, a lifelong missionary to Hispanics, led more Hispanics to Jesus Christ in one year with an impure Valera, sarcastically speaking, than you did in seven years while spending your time in stopping the publications of the Valera you didn't like. Your life work, Sonny Boy, is your self-magnification of yourself as an authority on a foreign language. Okay, Listen to what Ruckman's saying right there. Self-magnification. That's Breaker's work. I've never wasted half a sheet of paper, buddy, trying to prove that Diodati, Valera, Luther, Visoy, or Machielis were an error, nor that Olivetan or Erdosi or Songli should be corrected. I was too busy training young men as Bible-believing street preaching soul winners, over 400 of them, ordaining them, over 150 of them, and sending them out as missionaries, 54 of them, to preach in 17 different foreign languages while I was preaching in 91 prisons, where I have seen more grown men genuinely converted in a year as you or Park or Reyes McVeigh have seen in 10 years. In the future, send all your mail to the head of the bookstore. They left the name out. I don't have time to waste with hot doggers whose motives are not to get anyone saved. It is to make a good income for themselves by establish, establishing themselves as authorities who can challenge Pastor's name, you all have to hang on my shirt tail, wrong league, stupid, you're not in my league, nor are your buddies. You are in the scholarly community league, stay there. Okay? Um, so, there you go. Uh, 
And it's funny too because you know Breaker's got this big issue with chick tracks. And yet you read up here further in this article. Actually, he shows a picture of it here. Try to get up here to it quick. Uh, where's the thing at? Okay. This guy that wrote the thing, Robert Brent, Robert Breaker, sent me several boxes full of chick tracks to use in our Spanish ministry in South Carolina several years ago. Um, right there is the chick tracks. You can see. And down here is uh, from, you know, going to Robert Breaker there and then to Manny Rodriguez, the guy that wrote the article, from Chick Publications, even though um, Robert Breaker calls Chick Publications liberal and charismatic and attacks them. So, you know, uh, that's kind of a problem. But down here, it's, you know, this whole thing right here, self-magnification. Um, Again, I've been on YouTube for a long time, and I understand the way that to grow a channel, um, you got to sign up with YouTube and, and Google and things like that as far as you can go to their seminars and you can go and you can get help from them and things, and they'll help you to grow your channel. But you aren't going to do it without monetization. Um, it isn't just, it's just not going to happen. And this is another big you know, tip-off that we should all be wary of, you know. Um, I mean, the Lord warned us when, you know, about when people speak well of you and, and when you're loved by the world. You know, the friend of the world is the enemy of God. Uh, it's a real problem when I see something. Let me just show you a couple here. Here you have Stephen Anderson. You just type him in there, Sanderson 1611. He's got 3,621 videos, 67,428 subscribers. Okay? Dave Flang. Uh, Anderson being false, of course. Dave Flang is, you know, good. 8,704 videos, a lot of videos, and he has 45,408 subscribers. Sam Gipp, which I have some issues with Sam, um, but uh, he has 126 videos and only 1,395 sub subscribers. And again, you know, Sam Gipp, you know, people say, well, it's, it's interesting to see uh, Robert Breaker do his things on whiteboards. Well, Sam Gipp does the same thing. Where are all his thousands and thousands of subscribers? And, you know, Sam Gipp is an author that has actually brought out some of his own original material. But uh, Gateway Anabaptist Church, I've known, you know, about these guys, too. I, I've actually helped. Uh, early on, they wrote to me and, you know, some of the brothers from out there, and they said, you know, they asked me questions about video software and computers and what do they need and whatever else, and I, I helped, you know, gave them some answers. Uh, so I know some of the guys out there. And uh, they have 863 videos, yet only 502 subscribers. And again, they're doing, you know, pretty good quality stuff. I mean, you can see, you know, that's the kind of stuff that they're doing. You know, Chick Publications, you know, 274 videos, 8,162 subscribers. You know, uh, James and Patrick Patel, I can't see. It's kind of weird. I don't know why that I can't see how many people subscribe, but they have 735 videos, but they don't have that many subscribers. You know, it's probably, I think, right around 20,000 or so, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Robert Breaker, 576 videos, and yet 97,718 subscribers. Now, you know, I know people are going to go, oh, you're jealous. Well, you can think whatever you want. I don't care. Let's look at this thing from a logical, scientific standpoint here for a minute. How can he have more subscribers than any of these other channels, including Steven Anderson? Steven Anderson that has, you know, Paul Wittenberger, professional Hollywood guy working for him, and he puts out high-quality videos. They're satanic, but, you know, they're high-quality videos. High definition. Breaker's video quality is terrible. How is that working? I saw some people say, well, he puts out videos in English and Spanish. Again, so does Anderson. Anderson puts them out in all kinds of different languages. Why is it that Breaker has literally, what is that? Uh, yeah, over 30,000 more subscribers than Steven Anderson. I mean, talk to people on YouTube. Talk to channels on YouTube. To get to the 100,000 subscriber mark takes a huge amount of work. So going with what Peter Ruckman said about Breaker, who he knew personally, it's all about Breaker, basically.
your uh, what did he say here? I get the exact wording. Your life work, sonny boy, is your self magnification of yourself. Okay. What do you have to do to get up to that many subscribers? And you know, you say, well, you know, do you want that many? Not really. No, I don't. <laughs> I have a hard enough time taking care of twenty thousand something subscribers. Okay, and I'd have a whole lot more. But you know, the fact is, I I uh, block people from my channel probably on an average of I'd say probably five to ten every every day. You know, I'm always kicking people off my channel. It's not because I don't like them or whatever else. That's very few of the, you know people start attacking me personally and stuff, and just getting downright insulting. I'll block them from the channel. But for the most part, it's people that use profanity. And I mean, there's been people have written some really, really filthy stuff. And it's like it vexes me. And I think, you know what? New Christians don't need to be vexed by this or any any way it's saved. We don't need to be vexed by it. So I'm 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 having to ban people all the time. You know, I'm not about growing my channel. But even if I was, I'm never gonna reach that number. I'm not monetized. You say, can you prove that? Well, if you haven't seen proof before, I can show you again. Okay, here's my channel. Okay, you can see the little dollar sign is all crossed off right there. Over on that side. If I can go back here. Okay, there's my subscribers. Your estimated revenue, zero. I'm not monetized. Never have been, never will be. But you get this guy with his, you know, uh, whole purpose here. You know, life work, sonny boy, is your self magnification. You know, from a man that's been in ministry longer than a lot of us have been alive. I mean, you know, Dr. Ruckman, I trust his, you know, I have my disagreements with him, but I mean, I think he was probably the greatest Bible preacher of the last hundred years, Bible preacher and teacher. Uh, he knew the book very well, and he knew men, and they kicked this guy out. You know, they dumped him. Ask yourself why. And again, you know, I put up with this. I, I just kind of kept my mouth shut about him for a long time. You know, but I guess you know, Brother Brian doesn't have any grace. We got to, everybody's got to unsubscribe from me and all this other stuff. So. That's going to be it. I, I don't want to get into some, drawn into some big huge thing on Robert Breaker. I, you know, whatever. But my personal belief is if somebody can't get the simple gospel straight, I can't trust them on anything else. All right. Just as simple as that. I mean, if you, if you can't just look at the Bible and just read Romans chapter 10 and say, come away saying, just pray. Not repetitious, repeat these prayers, one, two, three, repeat after me. No, 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 no. No, nobody's advising that. Uh, if you, you know, just, just read the text, you know. I mean, I've talked to people about salvation and, you know, I've, I've witnessed to people and things. I'm never going to tell them, just, just believe, just that's, that's it. It's not going to happen. I'm going to say just, you know, ask the Lord to save you. You do, do you know that you're a sinner? You know, they say, well, no, I'm not a sinner. Well, okay, then you're not ready. It's just as simple as that. Jesus came to save sinners. If you're not a sinner, you can't be saved. When you're ready for salvation, you need to pray. You need to, you need to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Understand what he did on the cross. You believe what he did on the cross. You understand that he shed his blood to pay for your sins. Therefore, you ask him to save you. Simple. <laughs> so Simple. And you get somebody coming along saying, Yea, hath God said. Calling should be belief. Just believe. So that's about all I'm going to say about this. I, I hope I don't get, you know, because I get this thing. People just, you know, they draw me into this stuff and things. And then they back and forth and back and forth. You know, I got plenty of work to do. So um, I guess that's going to be it. Uh, just, just. Uh, I mean, you know, and the whole thing is this thing with Breaker, you know, I mean, he's, he just keeps coming out with the same thing over and over again. I mean, this is 2009 he wrote this thing. So, you know, it was eight years or whatever, you know, is that right? I think that's about eight years, you know, 
still not straightened out. So watch out for Robert Breaker. I would personally stay away from him, and I will not recommend his uh, whatever you want to call it, channel or whatever else. That's it. Thank you for watching.